seven minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Phil Proctor is on the phone. Phil has been our guest before, and uh, it, it's odd sometimes how we feel like we connect with some of our guests, Robin, and I hope Phil doesn't think we said this about everybody, no. because we don't, uh, but we connected with him somehow. There was uh, some kind of, we. I don't know, it's hard to explain how vibrations work. I don't even, that, that sounds almost New Age-ish or something, but anyway, it was good. I just heard him talking to you off the air, so it was good to hear his voice again. Phil Proctor is, well, has, let me see, he has the longest uh, amount of information on my <laughs> sheet of, about Phil than any of the other guests today. Phil Proctor is an award-winning, Emmy-winning actor, singer, writer, producer, uh, one of our favorite guests. When we were talking about our favorite guests of 2014, his mm-hmm. name came up. Uh, he does movie voiceovers for a lot of different things. I, I, the, the One time he was on when he told us he did the, the voiceover for the the Bruce Willis line in the Die Hard movies where he goes, yippee ki and then the words you can't say on radio yes. or TV, he's the guy who filled in for the words that you can't say uh, that you can say on TV, he changed the MF to Mr. Falcon. Yes, he did. Yeah. Mr. Falcon. I can't tell you how many times I shared that with somebody. My son, first of all. My son got a kick out of that. My son, Alex. Uh, he is, should I say some of these? I don't want to read all of this. Let's see. He does the voices. The Drunken French Monkey, which I, I the first time Phil was on, Mm-hmm. That's what I focused on, the drunken French monkey. Yes. And then, of course, since then, he's just become a friend of ours. So he's the voices of so many different things. Howard in, in the Rugrats, uh, Seahorse Bob in Finding Nemo. Uh, the drunken monkey thing is from Dr. Doolittle. Uh, he's a 45-year f- member of the three Grammy-nominated Fire Sign Theater Comedy, which was another first way I connected with him because I was a big Fire Sign Theater uh, yeah. fan way back when which was way back when <laughs> for me. Uh, he's in The Good Dinosaur, Inside Out. Gosh, he never stops. And I think he went to Italy. Italy, yes, he Okay, did. see, I remember right. I remember. Yeah, good good morning, Phil. Gosh, I, I had a awkward and long intro for you this morning. Good morning, <laughs> Phil. Yeah, well, it's, it's, uh, it's, I'm, I'm feeling rather awkward. I'm sitting here in my bathrobe. Uh, fairly early in the morning in, in beautiful California, where, of course, it's snowing heavily and it's minus 23 degrees wind uh, chill factor. This climate change is a real killer. No. Is it yeah, really? No, no, it's not. It's beautiful. <laughs> Another beautiful day. Another boring, beautiful day in Southern California. Oh, that's too funny. Right. But you guys are used to, to a pretty uh, a nice, boring, regular weather there in Ocala. Yeah, you yeah, know? I would say. I would say, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, I was able to spend some time in Florida performing uh, over the last couple of years uh, down in uh, Clearwater and uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale, uh, which was a lot of fun. I was doing some live audio theater, which is what I've been, you know, kind of boosting and promoting in, in the later, here in the later part of my long career. I figured out, I started as a child actor. The reason I have such a long resume is because I started when I was nine years old doing live television back in New York, uh-huh, uh-huh. okay, and, and now uh, I'm still performing, I'm still doing like uh, uh, live uh, radio or oh, audio really? perform. yeah, it's can, unbelievable. Can I, Phil, can I ask you something, uh, um, uh, what's his name, Jimmy Fallon is doing a bit lately, he's asking his guests to remember their worst gig ever, can, oh. can I do that to you, what was your, what's the worst gig you ever had? Well, in my career, I've had a lot of of strange gigs. There's absolutely no doubt about that. But the worst gig I had was uh, up in in Oregon. We were performing at the um, uh, at at uh, the the Oregon Shakespeare Festival site, whatever town that is. Uh, it's a famous town, and I of course can't remember it. But uh, we had not we had inadequate rehearsal in the hall that we were. This is Firesign Theater. And we were we were we had inadequate rehearsal, and we hadn't rehearsed our transitions f- from the first act to the second act. <clears throat> so I'm on the stage, and it was a good gig. I mean, everybody was having a good time. Uh, and then there was a blackout, and I turned around to step off the stage, and I stepped off the stage. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, oh, no. I no. stepped into <laughs> complete blackness, and 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 into this. I was falling oh, in, wow. in darkness. And and I hit my leg hit the side of a a, pair, a little stairs that they had there in the front of the stage, which broke my fall. It didn't break my leg. <laughs> Thank but goodness. It, it, it did cut it. I'm looking at the scar right now. I still have a scar on my leg. Oh and, wow. And 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 I, of course I had to patch myself up 
and we carried on and, and, and finished the show. Oh, but, no. But that was the most terrifying moment I've ever had. For the most part, the, uh, the, er, the performances and the gigs have been good because the people who come out, like yourself, Larry, you're a, you're a fan of Firesign Theater. So we would attract people who wanted to see us, or Procter & Bergman when we were touring around the country. So we always had sympathetic audiences. You know, but we did have audiences sometimes that didn't understand <laughs> what we were talking about. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. I, I, I performed for the first time in Boston with Bob Marley and the Whalers. It was their first concert appearance in the United States, and it was at a place I think called Paul's Mall back in, in uh, Boston, which was known as a, a jazz club, and they also did comedy uh, downstairs in this little room. So the Whalers... And, and Procter and Bergman, we shared a dressing room together. And, of course, these guys were smoking ganja, right? <laughs> okay. They had a, a, a big bag of, of marijuana, of weed, uh, w from the Bank of Boston. I'll never forget this. It was a big bag that said the Bank of Boston. <laughs> oh, and they no. were rolling what they call splits, which are like big reefers, big, uh, big doobies, uh, from doobies. the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> oh, gee. Right, and smoking this stuff. And, and Peter said, he said, uh, Bob, could, could we have a little bit? He said, sure, man. And he reached into the bag <laughs> and, and put a whole handful in Bergman's hand. Oh, and, and no. Now, we, we're, you know, just, we're just uh, college boys from Yale who, you know, happened to fall into the, into the, into the comedy gutter. But, but we, so we didn't smoke, we didn't smoke before our show, but we were, we were, we were high anyway, <laughs> you know, and it was, you couldn't see across the room. There oh, was that's so much too smoking. funny. Oh, my so goodness. So we, we go and we do our bit. Uh, oh, yeah. We said, look, you guys have to open for us, because they were going to, we were the headline act. We said, you guys got to open for us. You, your people are here. You know, they love to see you, and, and we love what you're doing, so you open, and then we'll follow up. And sure enough, they, they opened, and they were just dynamite. It was just great. But they could play stone because one guy is leaning on one of the speakers with his, his bass guitar going boom, 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 You know, they didn't have to say anything, right? Yeah, right. So we come on afterwards, and we're, of course, a little buzzed, and we start doing our very erudite, arcane comic material. And we reach this one point where we're doing a parody of I, Claudius which was very popular, the, you know, the series about ancient right. Rome. Right. Mm -hmm. And we were doing, I was doing uh, Kali Yuga, this crazy character, and speaking all this, this crazy language. <laughs> and there was a, a silence from this, this crowd. And in the back, we finally hear in the silence, what did that man say? What did that man say? Uh -huh. <laughs> that was about the same reaction that, that we got that you just gave me with that line. They, our material was going so far what over their that head say? that it was exploding in the air. Oh, no. <laughs> I call it high attitude bombing. Oh, no. And that was tough, you know. And we, oh yeah, and I could go on. We had another terrifying. Uh, performance once, a terrible, uh, uh, we were playing to a bunch of farmers up in Great Gorge, New Jersey, at the Playboy Club. Oh, oh no. Wow. Oh, no. They didn't understand a word we were saying. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so after the gig was over, How come they you know, didn't we wiped, understand? The, I don't we wiped the, the swap flat from, uh, sweat from our, our brows, and we went and we rewrote the whole show so that it would be at least uh, appreciated by the, the, the guys. Well, I'm trying to understand why it was hard to understand. That's how, uh, Well, if you, you know, see, you understand the Firesign Theater. The Firesign Theater, for a lot of people who, who may not know uh, us, because uh, we, we had our great success really in the 60s, and now we're all in our 70s, okay? So we've <laughs> had like a, almost a 50-year career. Yeah, yeah. But our great success was back in the late 60s and early 70s, and then, we, you know, we were touring and we were putting out records that everybody was listening to. Yeah, they yeah. were playing them on FM radio. But our records are like half-hour, multi-layered, a very dense comic uh, uh, adventures. Yes, yeah. You know, like extended, like a radio show or like a TV show. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And, and so the references that we made uh, are very, very arcane. We, the, the records are designed to be listened to over and over and over again. I have to so hear it. I haven't heard them in so long. Yeah, well, if you listen to them now, you'll find them just as modern 
uh, as they were when we did them, uh, even more so because we, we also have this, this strange proclivity to predict things. Yeah, I can give you a classic example. Yeah, let's have an example. We did an album called, I think we're all bozos on this bus, which predicted the computer revolution. <laughs> oh, really? Right? Yeah, the home computer revolution, the computer revolution in about 1974 or something, maybe maybe even earlier. Uh, well, when I was doing some of the Pixar movies, uh, Finding Nemo and Monsters Incorporated, <clears throat> uh, Steve Jobs had bought Pixar. He bought controlling interest, I think, in, in Pixar. And I met him at the uh, opening night up in San Francisco, where they had they actually took over the uh, town uh, hall, city hall, for their opening night party. And he said, "Oh, I'm a big fi- I'm a big fan of yours." I went, "Oh my God, that's great!" Well, wow. If you have an iPhone, and you say to Siri in the iPhone, "This is workers speaking. Hello." Siri will say back to you, Hello, Aklem, what can I do for you? Oh, really? I am the character Aklem. Oh, really? Nice. In that record. He put that into the, the phone as an homage to us. Oh, wow. Because that is we awesome. Helped inspire him to create the home computer. That is awesome. He was he was really into the the uh, that the the things that were popular at the time. The Beatles. He was mm-hmm. into you guys. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. So that oh, yeah, that actually makes sense. Was. You see, uh, I, now we have social networks. You were the Beatles of comedy. That, I, that's yeah, what we, I think. Yeah, we were called the Beatles of comedy, and we were doing uh, our our surrealistic comic stuff uh, really uh, long before Monty Python even became popular. Yeah, very much so. Right, very right. much so. I remember that. Uh, I think I may have told you, we. Uh, what I remember and how I knew about you was from my art classes in, in high school. My art mm-hmm. teacher would just put on the record and, and just put it on. We would just listen to that while we were drawing pictures. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> see, that's, pretty, that's pretty unique because uh, the, 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 in a way, that's why we had uh, the success that we had because our, our stuff was... was a parody of the style of media, okay? Uh, in other words, we were, we were parodying commercials, and we were parodying news shows, and we were parodying all kinds of stuff that you would hear on television and on the news. So if you are listening casually, just as like, you know, you hear it in the background, you'd think you were listening to something real, but wow. we were doing something surreal. It is. It is awesome. I, 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 Robin, are you familiar with Fire Sign Theater? Yes. Yeah, you showed it to okay, me. Okay, I'll yeah. have to. Yeah, you I want to. introduce me to it. Phil, yeah, we, have well, to, we have to take a little break. I want to hear about your trip to Italy, if we can touch on that a little bit. And, sure. And, uh, of course, we have to uh, make sure to, to squeeze in the, uh, the Golden Age. Ah, the Golden Age, yes. I just did another live audio performance of one of uh, L. Ron Hubbard's really great fun uh, uh, Pulp Fiction pieces. So, so I'd be happy to talk about so that. So let me take a little break, and we will be right back with Phil Proctor, ah, Danny, one of our yum. favorite guests. <laughs> cloudy with a shower this afternoon, high 75. Tonight, partly to mostly cloudy and mild, a shower, areas of fog late, low 59 to 65. Fog tomorrow morning, otherwise a cloudy day, high 71 to 78. Tomorrow night, mostly cloudy, low 51 to 61. And then Thursday, cloudy with a passing shower in the afternoon, high 68. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Steve Williams. This is the Salvation Army, and I'm Major George Patterson to let you know that the Salvation Army is available 24 hours a day to provide help to anyone. We also have a family store at 120 Northwest 10th Street in Ocala. On Tuesday to Saturday from 9 to 4, you can do your shopping, or if you want to donate, you can call 352-732-4469, and we'll even pick up. 352-732-4469. All funds generated by our store go into the programs here in Marion County to help the needy. The LPGA Tour will kick off the 2015 season right here in Central Florida at the inaugural Coates Golf Championship presented by r Carriers, January 26th to the 31st at Golden Ocala Golf and Equestrian Club. Kids 12 and under get in free with a ticketed adult, so bring the entire family to see 120 of the world's best female golfers compete on a nationally televised stage. For information and tickets, visit Coates Golf Championship 
dot com. All right, twenty two oh, minutes gosh, after. I love Phil. You, 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 you have an advantage over me. You get to talk off the air. I know. Uh, all I, right, so Phil, wow. Phil Proctor is our guest. He's on the phone out in sunny, chilly California. Yeah. In his yeah. bathrobe. Uh, California. In his you, bathrobe. If you've never listened to Fire Sign <laughs> Theater, I would just, I would say you have to check this. Uh, check them out. How many guys were there in Fire Sign Theater? There were four of us. Just four. Uh, we lost Peter Bergman to leukemia. Uh, three years ago, which oh, was a goodness. terrible loss because he's such a dynamic, intelligent, and, and focused comic force. Uh, you know, Time Magazine did an old bit on him. I mean, he, he really did have... We, we've had a, a, a strong cultural effect uh, on on uh, on the country. <clears throat> One of our albums, Don't Crush That Dwarf, Hand Me the Pliers, which predicted uh, <laughs> channel surfing, uh, right? Click, click, click. Uh, that, that's in the Library of Congress as, a, as, an, as an historical recording. Wow, that's crazy. I, know, or, I think it's actually an hysterical recording, but that's not yeah, right. Histor- <laughs> yeah, well, that is true. Now, do, did you go to, or do you go to, like, the, glo- what was that thing called the other night? The Golden, Golden Globe? Yeah, do you do that? Do you go to them? Uh, no, I have. I'm, 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 it's odd. I've, I'm still doing movies. Uh, I, I did two movies last. Uh, two movies have been released recently. Um, one of them is called Window of Opportunity. You can check it out online. It was produced by John Densmore of the The Doors, and it's a political comedy thriller. And then this year, uh, with my wife Melinda Peterson, I did a movie called The The, the uh, Love Addict, which is a wonderful comedy. It's already won some awards. Out oh here. wow! I have to check it out. Well, the Love Addict is in post-production. It's not out yet. Oh, it's not out yet. Okay. But it okay. will be. And then we also did a, uh, a film of one of L. Ron Hubbard's uh, short stories called They Killed Him Dead, which is uh, in post-production as well. So I still keep my hand in. You know, uh, my, my, my tongue is, is much more doing more work than my body. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm so doing the villain you? on the next Batman movie, and I, I added some more voices to Assassin's Creed. Which oh. I was the villain, Doctor Vidic, in for four years, you know. So, and and as as you you mentioned, I'm doing uh, stuff on the next Pixar movies. So, you know, I'm still a busy guy. You sure but, are. What 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 were you doing in Italy? Well, in Italy, we were just on, on vacation. Oh, okay. However, okay. I take advantage of any of these foreign trips to to study language and dialect because I use it so much in my work. E adesso io posso parlare italiano meglio che ho parlato. I, I can speak Italian a little better than I spoke it before. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. That, I, whatever you said, it sounded good. Well, I said I could speak a little better than I spoke before. Oh, okay. And, <laughs> and, 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 the, and spending three months away was absolutely an amazing adventure, an absolutely amazing adventure. We stayed at one point in a 600-year-old farmhouse that had been converted. This is up near... Uh, uh, near uh, Bologna, uh, up in the country north of Bologna, uh, had been converted by Paul Magid, who is one of the members of the Flying Karamazov Brothers. Oh, wow. Now, I don't know if you're acquainted with the Flying Karamazov Brothers, but they are uh, a, a juggling troupe that made a transition into, like, uh, performing on Broadway, okay, because they would create plays. They were, they were another, like, you know, uh, surrealistic comedy group right, in a way. Right, right. Four guys who juggle. And, uh, and Paul Maggot has been making his career uh, staging uh, of, events in Italy and throughout Europe. Street fairs and big parties and movie openings and stuff like that. Oh, wow. And, and, you know, so it is possible to make a living in another country. But uh, Italy uh, is suffering like 40% unemployment right now. You know, uh, the people are absolutely wonderful. The spirit of the people is great. They were so helpful to us because we our, our trip took us all over Italy, from the north down to the south, where we stayed in a, a true low house, which is like a, a, a crazy stone house with a domed roof that they used to just keep animals in. Oh, but wow. of course, in, in today's world, they're now selling them for millions of dollars to you know to British tourists, right? <laughs> so, so we stayed in one of these modernized uh, barns, you know, stone barns. Oh, that sounds exciting. Yeah, sharing it with animals, of course. You have to do that still. Of but, course. <laughs> but, but anyway, it was a grand, grand adventure. <clears throat> and yet, uh, I, I wasn't able... For, and, and for those three months that I was away, uh, I, was surpri- I was actually able to do some work. I had to add some voices to this movie, The Love Addict, in which I play a, uh, an older guy whose trophy wife wants a divorce. 
uh, and my trophy wife is played by the incredibly beautiful uh, Courtney Stoddard. If you Google Courtney Stoddard, and I'm sure she'd enjoy being Googled by you, <laughs> you'll see what a gorgeous, gorgeous woman she is. And I had to work with this. This I tell you, show business can be really tough. But anyway, oh, yeah. you, know, you just grit your teeth. Oh, I found it. her. Oh, she is beautiful. Yeah. So anyway, I had to add some voices to this film, and I was able to do it on my iPhone. Wow. I could actually, you know, I have a recording uh, uh, app in my iPhone, and I would, I would record this stuff and send off an MP3, and it's in the movie. And it worked because I, one of them was supposed to be like a, uh, a message on a, a recording machine. Oh, I see, you know, I see. Right? Yeah. And the other one was, was some, some lines on a DVD that, that, that I play in the movie. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Okay? So it worked just fine. It could be squeezed out. But I, but I was able to do that in, in, the, in the middle of Italy in this Trullo house, which had no Wi-Fi. I had to actually do the recording and then go to this Wi-Fi cafe where we'd have cappuccino and Wi-Fi every morning. Right? <laughs> and then send it off from there. It's funny how they get together, huh? Cappuccino. But, but I could do that now. I could do auditions and actual work no matter where I am in the world, which is fantastic. But I, I just want to get back to a few... Uh, uh, I'm a little things. distracted, by the way, by the cleavage of the lady you just <laughs> had. Oh, you, look, you looked her up. Yes. I'm, lo I'm looking her up, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but she, she is... She we've has reinvented herself. Phil, we've only got one minute left. And, uh, oh, no. I right, know. Go to FiresignTheater.com yes. if you want to know about that. And go to <laughs> GalaxyPress.com if you want to see and, and hear some of the wonderful short stories uh, that we put on CDs of L. Ron Hubbard's Golden Age of Pulp Fiction which we perform every Saturday night uh, in Hollywood. I don't perform every Saturday One night. of these days we'll be out there and see you. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I hope so. I'd love to meet you guys. If, if you're ever here and you're doing the one in Clearwater, we'll definitely come down to see you. Okay, terrific. I'll let you know. Yeah. I think I might be doing something at Ruth Eckert Hall uh, with Zev Buffman possibly this year, some more live uh, oh, awesome. uh, uh, audio presentations. I'll let you know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Phil, as I said in the beginning, you are one of our favorites, and uh, you've become a friend over the phone and uh, one day in person. Phil Proctor, thank you so much. What a great interview you gave us. Well, when I meet you the next time, I won't be wearing a bathrobe, I promise. That's okay. <laughs> it's okay with me. <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a swimming suit. <laughs> Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. The French magazine targeted by terrorists, defiant with its new issue. This week's edition of Charlie Hebdo will feature on its cover a cartoon of Islam's prophet Muhammad, who gunmen said they were avenging. Fox Radio's Simon Owen. Two of the nation's toughest abortion bans before a federal appeals court today, North Dakota and Arkansas, asking the court to reinstate their restrictions. And it was a Buckeye blowout for Monday's college football playoff championship game. Ends with an intercept. And the Ohio State Buckeyes are the first national champions of the playoff era. Ohio State defeating the Oregon Ducks on ESPN 42-20. Running back Ezekiel Elliott was ruthless, rushing for 246 yards and four touchdowns. They paved the way for me. The Ducks fall to 0-2 in national championship games. Fox Radio, Steve Rappaport. Fox News, we report, you decide. Good communication is key to business, especially when you need to work together with people that aren't in the same office. So what do millions of small business professionals do when it's time to connect with remote clients and colleagues? They use Citrix GoToMeeting, the proven solution for meeting and collaborating online. Now it's your turn to see why. Visit GoToMeeting.com and click the Try It Free for 30 Days button. That's GoToMeeting.com for your free 30-day trial. Go to meeting. Meeting is believing. When your fingers grace your nimble wireless keyboard, do you feel a connection? Do you consider your 8-gig memory laptop your office BFF? If so, you might be gear-centric, someone who knows that the right office gear helps you do great things. And at Office Depot and Office Max, we have the quality tech gear you need. Right now, all PCs are on sale, like a 15-inch HP laptop for $249.99. Office Depot and Office Max, gear up for great. Valid in-store only, offer ends 117. Hi, Danny Warfel here. Get moving with Florida Credit Union's fast and easy loan approval process. Let Florida Credit Union start up a new car loan for you today. No more waiting, hassles, or stop signs. You can even apply online. With a strong financial team behind you, you can enjoy great rates and fast approvals. It's all about personalized service and a streamlined process. 
Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Good credits, bad credits. It's none of our business because we're not an auto dealer. We're not a bank. We're not your mother. We're OcalaForSales.com. Marion County's marketplace for cars, trucks, and SUVs. We've got thousands of sellers standing by to take your call. No middleman. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSale.com. Prices and inventory change daily. Offered in uncle deal up charge. Undercutting rust proofing factory surcharge or delivery fees. See website for details. Do you have areas that have started sagging or drooping? Is what you're looking at not quite the same as it was years ago? Are there enhancements you've been putting off? Is there serious damage you need fixed? Then call on us, Damage Control Services. When your roof is sagging and the drywall is drooping after a storm, or your home just needs some enhancements from damage repairs to new construction, Damage Control Services is here to help. Here are today's headlines from the source WOCA. State lawmakers are working to fix what some say is a loophole in the law, banning text messaging while driving. Three bills have been filed to strengthen the current law. Senate Bills 246 and 192 are waiting for review along with House Bill 1. If passed, all three bills mandate that drivers should be pulled over immediately if caught texting while on the road, making texting while driving a primary offense. Lawmakers say they also want to find to be doubled if someone is caught texting while driving in a school zone. Stay Alive, Just Drive Executive Director Jay Anderson said he hopes the new bills making the ban a primary offense in Florida become law. It is now a secondary offense, and that implies that drivers must be breaking another traffic rule, like speeding, before they can be charged with texting while driving. If the bills are passed and signed by Governor Scott, they will go into effect in October. The Star Banner is reporting that the driver of the black Ford F-250 pickup truck that swerved off of I-75 near the Bellevue exit on May 3rd of last year and killed a Florida Highway Patrol trooper, a tow truck operator, and a businessman standing on the side of the highway was in court yesterday. The man, identified as 23-year-old Troy Thomas Owens, will have his license suspended for six months and must pay a $1,000 fine. After listening to a half day of testimony from troopers who were worked the fatal crash and motorists who testified about watching the truck and trailer driven by Owens travel at a high rate of speed and make several close call lane changes. County Judge Thomas Thompson III found Owens guilty as charged of a civil citation for failing to use due care, according to the report. Trooper Chelsea Renee Richard, the tow truck driver John W. Duggan, and the businessman George Phillips all died in that crash. A North Fort Myers man was arrested after a deputy said she witnessed him drop his pants at a busy intersection and begin dancing. The incident unfolded yesterday morning near the intersection of US 41 and Pine Island Road when a deputy observed three people walking in the crosswalk with bicycles just after one o'clock in the morning. The deputy said one person in the group, later identified as Clayton Cornelison, stopped in the middle of the crosswalk, set his bicycle down and pulled down his shorts. Shortly after, the man proceeded to shake his genitals by moving his hips in a circular motion and proceeded to dance in the middle of the intersection with his pants around his ankles while facing in the direction of oncoming traffic. That statement according to the arrest report. The man then noticed the deputy watching him and pulled up his pants and continued walking. The deputy made contact with the group and learned they had just left a nearby pub. The deputy then confronted Cornelison about his alleged action. He told her he wasn't wearing a belt and that his pants simply had fallen down. He said it was an accident and that he was just simply trying to pick up his pants. He was then taken into custody and transported to the Lee County Jail. He is charged with indecent exposure. Cornelison and the other individuals with him were all given traffic citations for failing to obey a pedestrian control signal. And finally, blood centers around Central Florida are urging healthy people to donate blood. They said they are extremely low on donors right now because of the flu virus. Fewer donors are coming through the doors of the blood centers because many of those people who usually donate are sick. All blood types are needed. However, there is an increased need for the O negative blood type. O negative is the universal blood type which can be given to any patient. And those are the headlines from the source, WOCA 96.3 FM and 1370 AM. 
cloudy with a shower this afternoon. High 75. Tonight, partly to mostly cloudy and mild. A shower. Areas of fog late. Low 59 to 65. Fog tomorrow morning. Otherwise, a cloudy day. High 71 to 78. Tomorrow night, mostly cloudy. Low 51 to 61. And then Thursday, cloudy with a passing shower in the afternoon. High 68. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Steve Williams. I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOCA. Today in Florida Ag News, I'm a Southeast Agnet. American Farm Bureau Federation's 96th Annual Convention and Trade Show wrapped up yesterday in San Diego, California. State Farm Bureaus represented awards at the annual event, and one of those awards went to Hillsborough County, Florida Farm Bureau as they received the County of Excellence Award. Sabrina Hill caught up with Erin Smith, a board member from Hillsborough County, to discuss that award. We are out here at the American Farm Bureau Federation 2015 meeting and convention. Tell me what you are talking to farmers about? We actually uh, were awarded a County of Excellence Award. We put on legislative tours, and so we're talking to attendees about how they can educate their elected officials about agriculture in their local area and their state area. And what are some tips that you would give them? Agriculture is really difficult to understand for the, the common public, so what we're trying to tell producers and agriculturalists is to make it generalized for them to understand. So again, congratulations to the Hillsborough County Farm Bureau. What do you need? Disease control. What do you get? Disease control. Copper ions do the trick. Copper ions do the trick. Killing fungus mighty slick. Killing fungus mighty slick. On better copper I am so. On better copper I am so. Champ ion turns crops to gold. Champ ion turns crops to gold. Smaller, smaller, copper, copper. Tell your sister, tell your mother, Jet Bion has got you covered. Got more cover, don't you know? You got better disease control. Recruits, ask your retailer for Jet Bion or go to newfarm.com. Always read and follow label instructions. Hoo-ah! Randall Wiseman, Southeast Agnet. Your home is safe, or is it? AA Lock, Dock, and Security. The name has been a staple in Ocala since 1985. Do you have the right equipment in place to have peace of mind when you are at home or away? AA Lock, Dock, and Security has the right people to install and monitor your home or business. Call today for a free on-site security analysis. Call 867-1965. AA Lock, Dock, and Security. 219 Northwest 10th Street. 867-1965. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! 